Hello and welcome to the Sunday show, the only primetime television broadcast explaining the Eastern European geopolitical turmoil to English language audiences. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook and of course please go down to Hromatske website. And oh, what guests we have today. Frankly speaking, I'm quite a bit jealous because my attempts as presenter at Hromatsky Radio to invite those people to my studio failed. However, here they are on television. These are Mr. Svetoslav Jurash, is part of uh, Volodymyr Zelensky's team. Uh, Ms. Uh, Halina Yanchenko, she's anti-corruption expert in Volodymyr Zelensky's team and the lawyer of uh, Volodymyr Zelensky's team, Vadim Halechuk. And Volodymyr Zelensky, of course, is the president-elect of Ukraine. Actually, we are speaking on the day when the official uh, government newspaper carried the official results of uh, elections which means that within 30 days the inauguration should happen. Before we go to this point, I would still like to make some uh, inquiries of Mr. Yurash. Sure. If we have a definition for Ms. Yanchenko, anti-corruption expert, and for Mr. Halichuk, who is a lawyer, then what are you? I definitely like to keep it more flexible because I'm focused in many different directions. First and foremost, I try to engage civil society in Ukraine and with various experts and involve them in different fields of our campaign. Second is the foreign policy advice I try to give and a foreign policy expert table that I help help uh, try and maintain, as well as the uh, advice on Galicia. To maintain all those hats, I will keep it, keep it uh, non fixed and that definition that you just gave me fits me very well. Okay, uh, then Ms. Yanchenko, anti-corruption expert more or less defines your sphere of uh, expertise, but could you be more precise in what do you do in the team of uh, the new Ukrainian president? Sure, uh, my main sphere of activities in uh, Mr. Zelensky's team is actually uh, to help to shape state anti-corruption policies to uh, advise what was going on for the past five years, what should be fixed, what should be changed, and what should be uh, done out of uh, those activities and policies that were never introduced in Ukraine. And Mr. Halichuk, whom I uh, recognized when I met him uh, 10 or 11 yes, days ago, uh, first by your face, and then I uh, looked into your biography and saw that you, at uh, one point you were a lawyer or a consultant for Nasha Ukraina, our Ukraine political party. Uh, how different is your role now in Mr. Zelensky's team, or is it just the same? Well, uh, I am the lawyer uh, of the uh, election law team, so to speak. This is the expertise, uh, my expertise, and uh, uh, this is the main mission. This is how we came in, uh, myself and the team, uh, into the campaign. We were invited to uh, assist with putting together the legal strategy and of course to walk the, the, the party and the candidate through all the uh, uh, formal requirements of the election law. Uh, therefore, that's my main focus of expertise, of, of the uh, affairs in the uh, uh, in Zelensky team. We, uh, we done with the election campaign, with a very successful election campaign. With this election with campaign. With the presidential campaign. There is another campaign. one looming. And now, another campaign is looming. We, therefore, we, the election lawyers, we, therefore, uh, stay in put. Mr. Zelensky and his team uh, provoke a keen interest within the Ukrainian public. And, of course, I was, uh, at first, rather skeptical about him, but then I decided to give him the benefit of the doubt. How often do you have to give Mr. Zelensky the benefit of the doubt? I have been working with uh, Mr. Zelensky um, and Quartal 95 for some years now. Uh, our law firm had been providing legal services to uh, uh, the team of Quartal. Uh, therefore, we had quite different experience interacting with him 
uh, as uh, the uh, the manager, the the, the uh, frontman, the leader of Quartal de Onastepe, uh, which is famous for the political satire. So when uh, I started getting involved into uh, the discussions of uh, possibility of Mr. Zelensky going into into politics, I had my doubts too. Uh, I guess for the same reasons that everyone had, uh, but those quickly went away after we started actually discussing politics. Uh, he had very mature political ideas. He had, uh, I'd say, what it takes. Uh, that there's a, Americans say presidential material. Uh, a lot of people were saying they just don't see it in him, but those who knew him for a while, uh, they were pretty sure that once he decided on a political career, he will be a success, which he proved with this campaign. So uh, the doubts, once you start working with him, your doubts go away. He's, he's an excellent manager. He's a very honest person. He's, uh, uh, he has what it takes to lead, and that is, that's what made him, made him to succeed in this campaign. Why did you decide to work for Mr. Zelensky or with Mr. Zelensky? And by the way, is it for or with? Uh, I would say it's rather with because I'm working in the board or a team of experts. It's a rather a big team of maybe 50 experts in various uh, spheres who actually volunteer. How, how many of them are anti-corruption? Uh, not that many. There are actually two anti-corruption experts. It's me and Ruslan Rebashapka. Mm -hmm. There are a few people who are doing the, um, who are suggesting some reforms on uh, uh, legis legislation related to uh, justice. Uh, and uh, I think there are one or two persons who uh, deal with law enforcement specifically. Uh, but uh, there are also a variety of other experts and all of them are volunteers. So it's, I would say it's a joint effort to actually change something in the, in the society. And I can also add that I am a relatively new member of the, of the team. I was uh, engaged for a couple months only, uh, consulting and I suggesting... I heard the story that you were, or your ideas were borrowed even without you knowing about this. No, it was without, with me knowing because I was invited for a meeting and I suggested uh, some amendment to the uh, very first uh, amendment of the, uh, of the program, of the election program, but I uh, had no idea whether these um, suggestions will be uh, included or not. And it was a great surprise and it was the very first uh, positive bell for me. Uh, that uh, might have been that something was taken from you without you knowing about this. No, with me suggesting. So I came to the meeting, I suggested. They were like, okay, nice ideas. It was nice to meet you. Oh, so they and that, uh -huh. Yes, and then. Uh, um, Don't call us, we will call you. Uh, well, something like that. And then I, I've read that these amendments were introduced. So it was uh, a positive sign that this team is actually not faking politics not faking meetings with experts, but they really do hear and they really do implement their uh, positive ideas. Mr. Yurash, how do you combine the uh, relations with civil society and the international relations? What's uh, common mm, with this? No, I don't combine them in separate fields, but basically the point is that I was trying to introduce in the beginning as many experienced, uh, wonderful people from civil society who are doing great things, be that in government, near government or on their own, try to get them to talk with Zelensky's team and to see that their projects will continue with Zelensky being president. I mean, I saw that people, Ukrainian people are very angry and they will not be electing Mr. Poroshenko for quite a long time. And I knew that I wasn't on Poroshenko's train as well. And I joined the team in mid-February with basically the wealth of wonderful people that I've met uh, since the Maidan. And basically because of uh, my ability to talk with them about this direction, many of them came to our HQ, many of them came to talk with various managers of the campaign, and they became either one, other experts or facilitators or communicators of various parts of Ukrainian society. On the international side, though, it's a bit different story. Uh, when I came in, uh, the international expert board was a bit barren. So I added a number of experts who I came to meet as a secretary for the civil council for the Parliamentary Committee on Foreign Affairs. Uh, and basically they 
they changed up uh, many things on the foreign policy agenda. And I saw the same thing that Ms. Yanchenko saw as uh, those contributions, those ideas that we try to give out, change the direction of the thinking and policy in the campaign. So seeing that impact motivates you immensely to continue working on this because you see a chance to reflect your ideas in the policy of the country. How often does Mr. Zelensky meet uh, so-called ordinary people face to face? So far we've been getting different um, uh, information about him meeting foreign diplomats or spiritual leaders of Ukraine. By the way, we have some photographs of uh, Mr. Zelensky <laughs> meeting orthodox hierarchs and also Muslim leaders of uh, Ukraine. Well, eventually they will be shown, I believe. So how often does he speak to people on the streets? Except, of course, from the television screen or from the stage. Well, if I can try and answer that, first, his whole life he was speaking to ordinary people. His whole life is about engagement with ordinary people. It's not exactly news what, uh, what Mr. Zelensky is to most Ukrainians who essentially spend their entire lives seeing him on their TVs or, or seeing the material that he kept producing. So they knew him. Television but as far is as one thing, talking to a person... But as far as 20 years, tw yeah, of course, and if you take this interview, it's one story, but talking to, from a TV for 20 years about problems that Ukrainians feel very deeply changes uh, their perception of you and engages them with you. And so they are much more willing in the end to trust you when you are, trying to when you are producing a whole different picture for your country in the years coming forward. Is he prepared to go to a community and talk to people on the street, on the yes, ground? Yes, he has done that. Has what, done that many when, times. When? Well, and how many times? Well, for example, the, uh, I remember the incident which essentially made me think about joining the campaign. Where he went to a barrack, to army army barracks in Lviv, and he essentially first spoke to the soldiers there making all the right points about Ukrainian border, about Ukrainian war with Russia. And then he came out to the soldiers which were protesting him and started to engage with them, seeing that, seeing a man come out so easily to people who essentially were opposed to him and engage with them and argue with them and talk with them convinces you that this is a man who essentially has the people's touch, so to speak, to try and change people's minds and hearts and bring together both the hearts and minds and the experts who, uh, who are helping him to build the country. Mr. Yurash, you mentioned war with Russia. Yesterday, in an interview, uh, the Ukrainian oligarch uh, Igor Kolomoisky allegedly mm. linked to Mr. Zelensky, or Mr. Zelensky allegedly linked to him, said that uh, we have a civil war in Ukraine. From your point of view, would Mr. Zelensky be prepared to denounce this statement? He did denounce the statement in two statements that he made so far since the passport crisis with Russia. Yes, but uh, that was before Mr. Kolomoisky spoke. Well, exactly. I don't think it's Mrs. Lensky's job to respond to every single wrong remark done in Ukraine. I don't think it's his job to basically talk about every single interview in Ukraine. Thank and you. I, I, I think what it's is Mr. Zelensky's job? Right now, getting ready uh, for this very, very important job. Uh, it takes uh, all his time to meet with different people, with experts in different fields, uh, who uh, help him to understand how this is all functioning. Uh, first of all, the presidential administration, this is the issue number one. Uh, he's, uh, he's completely new to politics, uh, this, is, this, is no, this is no news, and therefore, uh, he doesn't have this, this practical experience that, uh, um, that others uh, before him had, uh, who came from the politics, who had been in Ukrainian politics all their life. So for him, it, it is a challenge to basically uh, get enough understanding of what needs to be done first. Uh, he has a lot of experts around him who very quickly walk him through these things and help him to uh, prepare uh, programs, you know, what needs to be done in the very first day as he, you know, enters the building on Bankala or maybe some other, well, building on Bankala. Um, and so there's no talk anymore about uh, moving the presidential administration to another there is place? Talk. He, uh, he was very emotional even when he was speaking about it and knowing him a little, I'm pretty sure that he, he gets things done. He's, uh, he's very 
certain about this uh, about this building. Uh, it's very difficult. It's not clear now how much it would cost, how long it would take, but people are working on it. And uh, ideas are flying in from all over the country what, uh, what needs to be done, where he needs to move, and, and who can take that building. So uh, it, it will be done. I believe that it will be done initially. Uh, however, Because this is a uh, rather visible action which may tell people, we promised this, we've done this. Yes. And it is easy to make. Uh, well, it's not easy. Uh, it's, it, it will take a lot of time. Well, we don't know how long it would take. And, uh, therefore, we, uh, um, we hope to speed up this process by uh, using the talent around us that we have. Uh, people, uh, people are coming up with great ideas. And uh, he being uh, the manager that he is, he is very quick to choose the right ideas. Thank you, Mr. Holichuk. Ms. Yanchenko, how different are the means and ways that you and other anti-corruption expert, another anti-corruption expert, suggest to Mr. Zelensky's team how different they are from what you've been advocating for quite a number of years? Um, I should say that probably most of the things that we were advocating for the past five years are now in the uh, agenda and uh, some of them are also in the uh, agenda or I would say a program for the um, first uh, 10 days. I'm also very uh, fond of Mr. Zelensky because he, uh, he really does not have that much um, uh, much um, experience in politics and that's so why he, he can, can be play, easily manipulated he can be flexible and mm -hmm. he can really uh, be someone who infuses fresh ideas uh, some innovations and we can see we can actually see uh, these kind of things through the whole uh, campaign program starting with the way uh, he and his team communicated of course there were less appearance at tv station which is uh, traditional things to do for the politics. Less but, appearances on TV. Yeah, but there, but there was a lot actually of uh, work uh, uh, done with the experts and practitioners in the places. Zelensky, I ask again, me, less appearances okay, on TV. Not that much as compared to Listen, other. Listen, I've been in correspondence with Mr. Zelensky's press service asking for uh, an interview with Mr. Zelensky and I got the answer that because the candidate had more than 300 requests from Ukrainian and foreign mass media, the decision was made not to give personal interviews until the second round of election. The very next day the press service sent out a circular saying watch an exclusive interview given by Mr. Zelensky to Ukraina television channel. That's about uh, not so many appearances Yeah, on but uh, um, I just try to say that uh, there were another ways to interact with the society. Uh, for instance, one of the unique things that Zelensky suggested is to actually make the agenda open. After the first draft was, um, uh, was submitted to... Um, officially submitted, uh, it was open for the public and uh, the team of Zelensky suggested to any Ukrainians to send their ideas and suggestions to the agenda. Oh, uh, I remember this were, being done before. Uh, but uh, by whom? By uh, Yulia Tymoshenko, for instance, by Inna Bogoslovska and many others. Do, did they really work them through? Well, through this through I don't comments? know, but the same I don't know about Mr. Zelensky. Well, when I we can... say this was done for the first time. Okay. Well, anyway, again, uh, we and many, many people in this country are prepared to give Mr. Zelensky and his team the benefit of the doubt because as mm -hmm. Mr. Yurash rightly said, and I think uh, you as well, uh, Mr. Poroshenko did not uh, justify the hopes or expectations that Ukrainians pinned on him. In the uh, final stage of uh, uh, presidential campaign and this actually clinch between the two major candidates, there was a lot of uh, allegations against both of them. Well, and uh, for me, one of the indications of how people may work against Mr. Zelensky was that, you mentioned Maidan here, some people say he wasn't on Maidan, he didn't support Maidan openly, so we cannot trust him. 
LS by deposing those that came in after the Maidan and used this unique chance and abused it, he very much uh, justified his lack of presence on the Maidan. He, to me, at the very least, vindicated himself by deposing all those that essentially didn't realize the dreams of the Maidan. Well, frankly speaking, I do not think that being on Maidan is a necessary requirement for being a person of importance in Ukraine. And in the same way, as you rightly said, being on Maidan uh, sometimes is a justification for saying, you should forgive us for this because we mm -hmm. were there. Let's see what, what will happen. Uh, about the coming back to war with Russia, I was uh, very much... Mm, not surprised, maybe pleased, maybe interested in Mr. Zelensky's typical reaction. He, uh, he picks up the gauntlet, yes? When Mr. Putin said, we will give uh, Russian passports to Ukrainians, first on the, well, he of course does not use the term occupied territories, but first in the uh, Donbass area, then uh, he said that other Ukrainian citizens will be able to get uh, Ukrainian, uh, Russian passports. Uh, Mr. Zelensky almost immediately said that Ukrainian citizenship may be given to Russians who are experiencing political persecution and all this. So again, the question was and is and will be, was it Mr. Zelensky's own idea or was it your advice? You no, know, certainly it was Zelensky, Zelensky's own instincts to respond to the war we still have ongoing in the East and the occupation of Crimea and Donbass with the words that are reflective of our dire situation and that we certainly will not change course in defending our country and restoring our integrity. My friend recently was in um, one uh, foreign country where he stayed in a room at a hotel which previously was occupied by obviously a Russian citizen. So when he switched on the TV set in this room, he immediately uh, started to watch a Russian channel which he does not do in Ukraine. But there he saw a very indicative uh, Russian television show which boiled down to accusations of Mr. Zelensky and of uh, the Ukrainian state uh, in uh, being akin to fascists. Actually, the message was a Jew at the head of a fascist state. Uh, how much, however much I had to raise this issue, but uh, Mr. Zelensky recently met orthodox hierarchs, he met Muslim hierarchs. Why didn't he meet a rabbi, the chief rabbi? Do you know? Don't worry, I'm just saying that that, that will happen. And uh, generally, we will meet with all the important factions in Ukrainian society, especially our incredibly important Jewish community. Again, Mrs. Zelensky himself is ethnically background as Jewish roots as well. We have the Prime Minister now who's Jewish as well, so there's no possibility of ignoring Jewish community in Ukraine. And thankfully that it will not happen. Exactly that the, exactly the message that the Russian propagandists spread. And when they um, had a Ukrainian commentator on uh, uh, the hookup, on the link up, mm -hmm. and he said, listen, uh, how can you tell, uh, say uh, about a fascist state when uh, the highest positions are uh, occupied by people of Jewish origin or at least Jewish connections. They said, well, we see that you are a Jew as well and you are a fascist nevertheless, and switched him on. <laughs> yeah, how, uh, and this uh, to me is a, um, evidence of preconceptions that we also have. I don't mean uh, ethnic background or even his uh, artistic career or whatever, but when you work for or with Mr. Zelensky team, which preconceptions do you have to fight? Which concern him or you, Mr. Halichuk? Well, uh, for, for us lawyers, uh, we're very conservative. Uh, we designed to not let people do what it is they want to do. It was extremely difficult to work with uh, this team in the beginning uh, because they just don't follow the rules. They, 
they very get very creative, sometimes too creative, and uh, that was the difficulties that we lawyers had. Um, but eventually, they um, partly because of the inexperience in, in politics and in election law matters, we were able to quickly get them to listen and to follow the rules that were established. Uh, therefore, uh, our problem with them, this, this, this sort of, uh, you know, they, they, the, the loose cannon issue, uh, what they're going to say, what they're going to do, how, how they're going to do uh, it's still this there. and that. It's still there. Uh, every now and then we, you know, we, we sit there and after somebody says something, we're like, uh, uh, did he just do that? Oh, okay, let's, we'll, we'll fix it later. Uh, but yeah, that's, on one hand, it's a little bit of a problem for, for us lawyers. Uh, but that's what the draw people to, to him and to the team. Very open, Amazing very answer. sincere. The preconception that you had to fight or still have to fight. Yeah, well, um, up to now, I didn't have any, uh, but uh, I'm a bit worried if everything that we plan will be fulfilled, given the role of the parliament of Ukraine. We know that uh, president uh, can influence a lot of the spheres in Ukraine. He does have uh, an initiative to draft legislation acts and pass them to the parliament, but then it's up to the parliament to actually pass them. And I think that it is very good that we have elections, upcoming elections in the parliament, because this half year, or maybe sooner, if we will have uh, um, an early elections, will show how the parliament reflect the, uh, the innovative, the anti-corruption uh, initiatives of the president. And if they don't, I think that it should be uh, the political responsibility that they should be actually holding. Mr. Rush. Well, the basic preconception which I developed over meeting and interacting with many of the top leaders in Ukraine, which is a know-it-all trait. The leader is always somebody who tries to fill and f force his vision on everybody else. Mrs. Lensky was very different. He was debating, discussing, asking, interacting. That certainly gave me a great deal of hope that this man is a leader who can bring together opinions, not just dictate to various what their opinions should be. I spoke to one sociologist, um, we analyzed the pattern of voting for Mr. Zelensky or also for voting against Mr. Zelensky, for Poroshenko and against Poroshenko. My personal impression is that uh, Mr. Zelensky's voting does provide a platform for uniting the country. There are different points of view on this. How prepared is the team and he personally and you personally to accept ideas which at first glance may be not your own? Uh, easy for me to answer. We lawyers are pretty much uh, stuck with whatever laws and rules are out there. However, uh, there will be changes. Uh, the president-elect made it very clear that he intends to follow the law very, very strictly and the Constitution. Uh, however, uh, even the for example... of the law or the spirit the of spirit the law? The spirit of the law, the letter of the law. However, there's a lot of work needed. For example, the election uh, law. The campaign uh, showed, again, how much... Uh, how many changes are needed to be made to the election law to modernize the campaign to make to make uh, you know the, the the campaigns are for the voters to cast their vote and and sometimes when you when you read Ukrainian law you you sort of get lost that what pur purpose this or that norm has so there will be a lot of cleaning up in terms of. Uh, changing the rules of the game, the, the, uh, the different sort of uh, restrictions, the, the red tape that is there. Uh, as I already said, you know, these guys are very creative. They, they're very quick to move. They're what very, about girls? Um, yeah, I apologize. These, uh, <laughs> well, guys, uh, actually guys go for, for both, so uh, it might be, might be that. People. In the, yeah. People. They, uh, so I'm pretty sure that this, this creative, creativity and the energy and the support that they got. Listen, they sometimes help. I hear from different sources that uh, Mr. Zelensky's team or the teams that are surrounding Mr. Zelensky uh, is composed or are composed of very, very, very different people. 
And my personal question to you, Mr. Halichuk, as an experienced lawyer and a person with a certain political history, uh, how you uh, work, for instance, with Mr. Portnov, who is a lawyer, but who clearly uh, belongs to another political camp as much as a lawyer can belong to a political camp? Oh, no, Mr. Portnov never met him. Uh, never seen him anywhere around the campaign. Uh, never heard. Is it true that he does work for Mr. Zelensky? No. no. I have, I have no, I, I don't think anyone has any evidence that Mr. Portnoy worked for uh, Zelensky campaign. Mr. And uh, Mr. Borton, yes, he is an old friend, first of all. Uh, of he's uh, of Mr. Zelensky. Mm -hmm. uh, they've known each other for quite many years. He, he made it. He made it very clear that they, first of all, are friends. And he's a very good lawyer and very experienced. He's actually one of those who does have political experience. So uh, his, advice, uh, his advice is useful. He knows what he's talking about when, right. when it comes to politics. Uh, Mr. Urash and Ms. Yanchenko, uh, how often you meet in the milieu of Mr. Zelensky the people with whom you would not work except for Mr. Zelensky? If I can start, I have not met people I wouldn't work with. Uh, all the people I meet are complex characters with various sides to them. But those people who have robbed my country, who have killed my people in various different occasions, I have not seen and thankfully will not see. Because Mr. Zelensky has clear boundaries that he doesn't want to cross and that, that he will not cross. I can only... Okay. Agree with that. Uh, coming back to Mr. Yurash's um, uh, statement that people have known Mr. Zelensky for many, many years, I would say that we have known him in a different capacity than he is now. Yes, and I've uh, uh, spotted, uh, I've noticed that uh, his campaign and his team are eager to exploit the positive things that were in his characters on the screen or on uh, the stage. Yeah, like being close to people, going to presidential work on a bike and all this kind of stuff. But they start to uh, say, listen, how can you associate what's done on the screen or on the stage with reality? When I start asking questions about uh, the IMF, at, attitude towards IMF, which was very pronouncedly shown in one of the films, mm -hmm. or about this uh, very disturbing scene when he actually shoots at the parliament. Yes, of course, then it appears to be in the dream, but it was there. Well, it's not season four of Double Sohana Road that we are filming. It's a whole new, a whole new engagement, a whole new level of possibilities to try and transform our lives and this country in total. So therefore, we won't be getting cues from the TV show. We'll be getting cues from amazing but experts you, like Mr. You Ms. are Yanchenko eager to exploit many. the positive things that were well, there. We are building up on the positive perception that people have towards Zelensky. They know beyond Slohana Roda for many, many years through Quartal and many things they have done in civil society as well as in media sphere. And they are building up on that with all the things we have to say in our program, with our experts, with people you see around you now. And they, because of all that, decided to trust us and give us the fundamental mandate that we've gotten in the end of April. The popularity of the new president is probably unparalleled in the Ukrainian history. And some of the jobs that he or his team offer uh, provoke the same response. Today I read that there are 3,000 or even more applications for the position of his press secretary. Who will choose? Who pulls the threads? It is impossible that Mr. Zelensky will, or he will have to dedicate several months to choosing from 3,000 candidates. Well, uh, if I might yeah, answer sure, that, sure. try to answer that, uh, the digital team, as we call them in the campaign, uh, is very professional. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of the 
things that, that were done during the campaign depended on very sophisticated software and very sophisticated use of social media, so on and so forth. We also, uh, we know that the digital team continues to, to work, actually started working on uh, many things uh, that, that go towards planning of the, you know, whatever, the first 10 steps of the president, will, what he does in the presidential administration. Uh, and they are the ones to build sort of this uh, software uh, that would assist with going quickly through these hundreds of thousands of applications to sort them through and to help uh, those who will be then selecting people to, to choose the right people. But of course the final decisions on personalities are made by him personally. He is very, uh, he's very, very productive when it comes to working with people and making the right decisions. He, he, he can communicate very quickly and, and, and get the right uh, point of view on, on, on the person. Uh, but yes. is it also true that uh, it would be impossible to build such a huge and successful campaign without a big and professional team? So it's true that there are uh, teams in uh, the variety of spheres who are the best professionals in this country, and this is digital team. There is also... Who are presumably the best professionals uh, in this country. Well, they did good. Uh, there are also very professional human resource uh, guys uh, in the team. And girls, I'm sure. And girls, the girls actually. Um, so uh, there are a lot of people. There, there is also a pool of people who are doing uh, the media communication. So there are people who can pre-select the candidates. And then Mr. Zelensky, of course, he is the main person who takes the final decisions on all, the, uh, on all this kind of HR um, stuff. Well, thank you very much for providing us with a bit of insight on Mr. Zelensky, on Mr. Zelensky's team. And I would like to finish with the question which was prompted to me by Mr. Sergei Leshenko, a famous Ukrainian journalist, come uh, MP, who went to support Mr. Zelensky and went to no end in doing this. And he said to me that Mr. Zelensky vouched to be president for just one term. But we cannot rule out that either you or people who voted for Mr. Zelensky or he himself would be tired or disappointed or irritated what would be a trigger that would prompt you to tell Mr. Zelensky, resign before the end of the term? If you want to start with me, my red line was always very clear. It's the border with Russia. It's the question of the border. If the border is going to change, I'm not in the campaign. The right. border for me is fundamental. Thank you. Ms. Janssen. I'm definitely in the team as far as I see that the programmatic ideas that we uh, that we sent to Mr. Zelensky are there and he is uh, honest about the, what he is promising to the society. As of the point, I see that he is very op uh, open, open-minded and very honest with all the team he's working. And Mr. Holichuk? Of course, following the spirit and the letter of the law, uh, the president-elect uh, for me, the red line would be if the president-elect decided to do something that pretty much all his predecessors did uh, to sort of spread his uh, powers beyond what the law had uh, defined for the president. Uh, and uh, the essence of the uh, Ukrainian uh, political system were, uh, were these decisions, were, were some of very important decisions were made uh, in in not very transparent manner, those two. Thank you very much. I'm pretty sure that these people were telling you what they really think. What formed these thoughts is another question, but we will be inviting them to this studio once again and once again to be on the Sunday show, the only primetime television broadcast that explains the Eastern European geopolitical turmoil in English. Follow us on Hromatsky International, on Twitter and Facebook, and see you later.